Mr. Secretary, Chief, John Davis, friends, family, and professional colleagues, members of the National Aeronautic Association Board, uh, this is indeed a very special occasion. It's the happiest of, of occasions. And uh, I'm particularly happy to see so many family members here. Captain Goodman's wife, Cindy, son, Robbie, his parents, Lieutenant Colonel U.S. Air Force, retired, and Mrs. Goodman. We have Captain Clover's wife, Debbie, and his parents, Malcolm and Matt, Lieutenant Colonel retired Toshif and Mrs. Toshif. And we have Captain Wojciechowski's parents, and of course, Staff Sergeant Simmons' parents. I said this was a special occasion. The McKay Trophy is our oldest, our most prestigious trophy. It's an important part of Air Force heritage. The first winner, by the way, was Second Lieutenant Half Arnold. He later won it again as Brigadier General Half Arnold. That fact won't be lost on any of you. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of other very distinguished winners Jimmy Doolittle, Benny Rickenbacker, Benny Fulai. Chuck Yeager, even before everybody knew he had the right stuff. <laughs> you could describe in lots of ways the exploits of past winners, but I could characterize the common denominator as a great display of courage and determination and extraordinary professional skill. I could also find lots of ways to describe the courage and the determination and the professional skill of this group. But I can't think of any more eloquent way to do that than just simply tell you about the flight that resulted in their being presented with the McKay Trophy. On the 5th of September of last year, Captain Goodman and his crew were flying a KC-135 on a tanker task force, deploying F-4Es across the North Atlantic to Europe. En route, one of the F-4s developed engine trouble and <coughs> shut the engine down. Headed for the nearest abort base, which was Gander, Newfoundland, some 500 miles away. En route to Gander, they developed thrust problems in the remaining engine and began the long descent towards the Atlantic Ocean. Captain Goodman and his crew, seeing the inevitable and unhappy end to that particular flight, decided to attempt an air refueling hookup and to tow that F 4 to Gander by then still several hundred miles away. Now that's an extraordinary feat in any case. It's not designed to do that. There's no certainty it'll work. The crippled F-4 was unable to maneuver into the refueling position, which is the normal procedure. And so the crew elected, using the eyes of the boomer as their only eyes, and with superb precision and great crew coordination, they pulled in front of the F-4 and literally backed the boom into the F-4 and began to gently tow him towards Gander with a gentle climb. I said the system's not designed to do that, really. They had a brute force disconnect. They had to repeat the procedure. In fact, they had to repeat the procedure four times. The last time, or one of those times, they finally hooked up some 2,000 feet above the icy waters of the North Atlantic. The episode had the happiest of endings. The F-4 was successfully and safely recovered at Gander. Now those of us who have spent a lot of time behind KC-135's refueling can fully appreciate the extraordinary airmanship demonstrated by the crew when they did that. And those of us who have spent time over the North Atlantic looking down on the North Atlantic from the fighter cockpit can appreciate but never fully the gratitude and the admiration of the F-4 crew. I talked to the F-4 crew this morning, just out of curiosity, and they should be here instead of me. <laughs> because believe me, they could provide a much more eloquent tribute than can I. Uh, you will be understood, Sergeant Simmons, that the aircraft commander allowed us to have that you put that boom places where you can't put a case in the I'll say no more about that. But in any case, it was totally successful. The McKay Trophy normally resides in the fire of the National Air Space Museum. 
the acquisition trophy and all the winners who are inscribed on that trophy received our virtually millions of visitors. I think we'll all agree that clearly the addition of the names of this group on that trophy will further illuminate that trophy and make us even prouder to have it sitting there in the foyer of the National Air Space Museum. Would you please read the citation? <coughs> Citation to accompany the award of the McKay Trophy to Strategic Air Command Crew E-113. Strategic Air Command Crew E-113 distinguished itself through outstanding achievement while assigned to the 42nd Bombardment Wing, Loring Air Force Base, Maine, on 5 September 1983. On this date, Crew E-113 was deploying to the European Tanker Task Force to refuel F-4E aircraft. While over the North Atlantic, an F-4E experienced severe loss of thrust. Crew E-113 maneuvered their KC-135A aircraft in front of the descending F-4E and at extremely low airspeed, in spite of the F-4E's adverse flight control malfunction, obtained an air refueling contact at only 2,000 feet above the ocean. The crew towed the F-4E on its aerial refueling boom over 160 miles until the F-4E regained sufficient thrust to maintain flight on its own. Their actions saved a valuable aircraft from destruction and its crew from possible death. The distinctive accomplishments of this crew reflect great credit upon itself and the United States Air Force. Captain Robert J. Goodman, pilot. Captain Michael F. Clover, co-pilot. <laughs> Captain Carl Wojciechowski, navigator. Staff Sergeant Douglas D. Simmons, refueling operator. This is the eyes of the operation. <laughs> I would be remiss if I did not reiterate the fact that this was a crew effort. There was six of us out there, including my crew of four and the crew, two people in the F-4. A lot of times, being a crew commander, it's always Bob Goodman's crew did this or Bob Goodman's crew did that, and sometimes the rest of the crew doesn't get the uh, necessary and required recognition that they should get. I would also like to thank our families for the support that they give us and the jobs that we do, the necessary job that we do for our country. I am also grateful for our commanders all the way up through the chain of command who provide us guidance and support and direction to the job that we do. And I'm sure that I reflect the entire view of the crew. We're very humbled and very grateful for this award. 